<laughs> you have a keyboard you want to talk about? Yeah, this I is, don't know where. I I was just about I have a couple mention, keyboards actually. Okay, my uh, my R button is slowly breaking on my current. Oh key wow, card. problems with MacBook keyboard. Oh, on your key, no, on key Oh card. man. Okay, well, yeah. okay, then let's segue that into. So I'm in the market. One Plus is coming out with a keyboard oh. that they're partnering with Keychron actually. Interesting. Which when I first heard One Plus keyboard, I was like, kind of weird. D- not against it. Like I I love keyboards. I think they're really fun. I think I'm slowly diving further and further down the rabbit hole of keyboards and i love it um mm-hmm. one plus making one i was excited but i was like uh i'm not quite sure then i saw it was with keychron i'm like okay cool at least they're partnering with a, a reputable brand already yeah and they almost feel like they match as far as their market positioning i, I always feel like maybe not lately but one plus being the lower price competitive but surprisingly good overall so- like product for the price, yeah, is and that's also what I I feel like that's a separate Keychron. question. Is that still OnePlus, or have we all just kind of given so up on what OnePlus <laughs> is doing anymore? That's what OnePlus would like to think it is. Okay, and that's also what I think of when I think of Keychron. Okay, is that fair? That's fair. Yeah, I'll call that fair. Um, the thing is, is we don't know much about it, but I just wanted to talk about it because their page for it, trying to find information, is insanely confusing. So I'm going to read you the the first couple things you get when you go to their page about their keyboard. Okay. You get one picture of a silver key with a little red squiggly line. Um, a couple things that say it's um, switches co-created with fans, double gasket mounted design, custom made layout and profile. And then it says, subscribe to get 30 red coins and receive product news updates. Back this product with red coins and get three times the amount invested during the product pre-order stage, see terms and conditions. And then a button to subscribe to news updates and become an investor. An investor. I'm very confused. It feels like a Kickstarter for yeah. it, but like, oh. I don't, it almost feels, do you know what it kind of feels like? It kind of feels like what nothing did to like, like invest into it way beforehand, which is funny because nothing <laughs> is Carl, which is from OnePlus, but not at OnePlus anymore. Yeah. But also this is for a keyboard, which feels kind of weird. And that is odd. I mean, one. OnePlus is they have mo- they have BBK money, so it's not like they n- yeah, need I, to do a Kickstarter. But that is kind of a hypey thing to do still. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if more and more companies, and I don't think this is like some revelation or anything, but um, it's telling me my lap speed, which is not great right now. I need to turn this off. I'm sorry. What type of workout did you do? I guess a run, <laughs> a track workout. But it's telling me every minute. Okay. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> Sorry, future Adam. Um, it feels like a lot of companies, which isn't much of a surprise, it feels like they're launching these Kickstarters more along the line of, it reminds me of like when you have a Teespring campaign and it's like, rather than make way too much of a product, you want a, an idea of how many people are going to order so then you yes. can make the exact amount of the product and not have too much overhead. Okay. Yeah, that that's what sense. I get from this. Yeah, like if you're OnePlus, you don't really know how many people would buy a OnePlus keyboard. You might yeah. think it's a cool idea, but then like, all right, all our all our buyers don't necessarily own a product that needs a keyboard mm-hmm. like this. So we'll just put the idea out there, give people a button to sign up, and then figure out more about what these people want, and then make it later. Yeah. Okay. And you just have to use red coins to do that. Whatever those Whatever are. the hell that is. Whatever. But um, <laughs> in terms of timetable, that's the only other thing we really know here. Um, it says in... January will be testing phase. February will be the product launch, but I'm guessing that just means the announcement. And then it says March to April, mass production starts. So if mass production starts in March at the earliest, I can't imagine we're seeing this till May or June, probably. Yeah, I have right? no idea what the life cycle of a keyboard is, yeah. or like how it gets made. But yeah, sometime next year is how <laughs> I'm putting it. Because we'll again, it's going to be like probably limited supply. I think you'll have to get one super early. And if you don't, it'll be sold out. And then you have to wait again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. But interesting. I, I feel like I was going to say there's like several different levels of, of keyboard enthusiasts. Mm-hmm. I haven't gone all the way to the bottom of the rabbit hole yet. Okay. You're but, segueing into everything I want to talk about this oh, okay. fantastically, by the way. I mean, I just... I, I used to be the just regular chiclet style keyboard mm-hmm. person on everything. So my laptop, obviously. But then when I got really good at typing fast on my laptop, I was like, let me just use that same keyboard on my desktop. So I just used literally the Magic yeah. Keyboard for a long time. And I thought mechanical keyboards as a category was a little extra and niche. And I didn't really get into it. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So I finally got to try a few. And I think mostly it was because I was on a Mac at this point And I had realized there weren't as many mechanical keyboards mm-hmm. for Mac. So every time I tried one, I'd be like, oh, it's kind of cool. But it just has Windows keys and I can't yeah. use it. 
So I found a couple good Mac mechanical keyboards and I was like, all right, I get mechanical keyboards over chiclet style. More satisfying, the oh, yeah. sound, they're better built. This, this Magic keyboard is obviously just a flimsy piece of, you know, the thin metal that Apple made. So I was like, all right, I get it. But like artisan keycaps and like crazy seven pound boards and like people gluing that, like making their I... own keyboards from scratch. I was like, that is, that is far out. That is crazy far out. I get mechanical keyboards, but I'm probably never getting there. Now you're opening a <laughs> package opening. right now. Now I'm at the point where like I understand, I feel like the differences between different switches for different types yeah. of activities. I'm into that, wired versus wireless, different keyboard oh. layouts and things like that. I kind of miss having a number pad. I'm considering my next mechanical keyboard being a little bit bigger we, and having a number pad. We just got a couple, um we just got a couple Gloria sent us their Bluetooth numpad that's just like an extra numpad on the oh, side right. with a couple extra volume controls and or like macro controls that's pretty sick potentially um, cool it's kind of like that won't work on mac though yet probably um i'm not sure glorious I'll is a weird in thing you might be able to try it we I'll have try. them we should try it um okay. but like that's the kind of thing i like 10 keyless or like 60 percent and stuff like that without the numpad and then but sometimes it's just so nice to have the numpad so to have it on the side that i can pull it over kind that's of like cool. what i do with my trackpad on the mac is really nice yeah um but you you segued into talking about a seven pound keyboard. What did you just pull um, out of that bag? So like you you said you've been enjoying mechanical keyboards more and more. I was lucky enough that after the typing test, a company called Monokey reached out and wanted to send a board. Um, okay. It was not built. They sent us the PCB, the case, and some keycaps. We had a bunch of switches at home, and when I got COVID, I got very bored. So I built my first keyboard, and I'm insanely proud of this. But can I hold but it? Feel this. It is a tank. You can ink. It feels like solid metal. Like you can legitimately hurt people with this. Oh yeah, it's crazy because the keyboard I was using before and I used in that video, the Key Colt two sixty five, I thought was heavy, and I really liked it because, I mean, one, it's a beautiful keyboard, and two, when I'm playing games, it just had like some more heft to it, and I don't yeah. like my keyboard sliding around. This thing. It, I can't move. If I was going to say, there's got to be some diminishing returns. Like, I have a pretty heavy keyboard. It doesn't move. If my keyboard is three times as heavy, I think the only thing I would notice is a general more funk feeling. I don't think I, it would move it's, less. I don't think it's like, yeah, it's not the feeling so much. I mean, it's solid, so I'm sure there's somewhat of a feeling coming through. I'm sure there's keyboard people out here who are like, you guys have no idea what you're talking about. But I, you're I right. Agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. um, for me... And a perfect example you saw this morning is I get insanely competitive. I broke my ping pong paddle <laughs> this morning when we were playing. Yeah. And like when I'm playing games, I will like shove my keyboard and stuff. So mm. now it's a so lot now harder. Being seven um, pounds, you'll actually break things yes. with your keyboard. <laughs> yeah, instead. right. This is a beautiful keyboard, though. Um, I mean, I think I have to give a little ASMR test right now. Sure. I'm just going to type subscribe to Waveform. Solid. Yeah, that was solid. It's, it's very nice. I don't want to go too deep into this because it's not the uh, look. I appreciate nice keyboards, keyboards now. In. That's what I'll say. Yeah, I appreciate them. Um, I'm in the market for a wired. Well, it could be wired for a Mac OS compatible. Yeah, mechanical mm -hmm. keyboard of any size, actually. And That's I just want to like at. confirm, like we know you can use Windows keyboards on Mac. It's it is much nicer when you do have all the correct keys all the and all the keycaps keys. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, there is, there's, there are just tools. an ease of use to it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not against it. I love the glorious keyboards. That's just, this is what got me. Like I was using a glorious keyboard mm -hmm. on my Mac after I was using the Magic Keyboard, and I'd remapped all the the Control key, the Windows key, everything to like match up. But I still realize that I use the brightness and media controls a lot, yeah. also on the Magic Keyboard. So having those just not work at all was kind of a bummer. So I really just want a specifically Mac OS compatible one. Yeah, that's where I'm at. But yeah. yeah, okay. Well, okay. I have one more keyboard that I want to show you that um, just got announced. I want you to click the link in the doc. It's from Final Mouse. And I want you to tell me what you think about this because I will be up front. I don't like this company at all. So I okay. am super biased looking at it, but I'd like to see what you think. Maybe describe it Is a little it the bit. the Verge one? Uh, With a screen? Yes. Okay. Because the Verge title is this mechanical keyboard has a whole ass screen underneath its keys, mm -hmm. which is That's amazing. A, yep. Final Mouse has a $350 keyboard, which appears to have transparent keys mm -hmm. and a video playing on a screen underneath those transparent keys. So when you 
touch keys on the keyboard, the video actually reacts. This is more than just a video. It's actually yeah. It looks like you're. Uh, it's like an overhead view of a f like a a koi pond. A koi pond, and when you hit a key, the fish all scatter away from the key that you pressed. That's that is that's over my head. That's, that's a, well extra. okay. This I don't know if all of them do that because they've showed a few examples, and I believe the fish one was the only one that kind of interacted correctly. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it's a keyboard where essentially there's a screen underneath the keys. You have full transparent keycaps and then rather than just like RGB and kind of like <laughs> in RGB keyboards, you can have things that like the lights pulse or you can have them rainbow slide. And oh like if you God. press keys, it'll like puddle from out from that. This is taking it to another level with this video, is, but this is nuts. I'm looking at the video on right now. You're, there's like a marketplace for buying videos that play that under the keyboard. This is like, like, <laughs> Yeah, this is clearly the level that I'm not on with keyboards yet. I think of this like a PC. Like when you buy a computer, 75, 85, 95% of people don't build their own computer. They buy a computer and just use it until it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And for the few percent that do build their own computer, there is a massive enthusiast market for all kinds of subtle things that only you would notice and be very proud of in the thing you built your ram sticks of rgb that you can you know coordinate the colors of as you're gaming and like all these little things you have the glass and you can see it and that's cool but like that's a very small amount of people mm -hmm. and this is kind of the same thing with keyboards like most people just get a keyboard but yeah. the small amount of people that are building their own keyboards are gonna think this is crazy cool i think but that's a small amount. Uh, I will. I'll counterpoint that a little bit, and I'm again. I'm biased. I inherently don't like this keyboard because I think Final Mouse is a pretty terrible company. Um, at three hundred and fifty dollars, I don't think it's at the price point of the people you're talking about. For True. reference, I believe the case to this keyboard is five hundred dollars. Just the case in the PCB. Just the red heavy piece. Mm -hmm. Like keyboard keyboards get expensive. Um, so like at three fifty, I wonder what really the like build material is on all of this, and then I thought you were gonna say the opposite. I thought you were gonna say like a normal board expensive. is like eighty dollars, and I think they're just Listen, overcharging. People. I think there. I mean, there are board uh, like if you bought a gaming laptop from like or a gaming keyboard from like Steel Series, mechanical gaming keyboard, like pretty cherry switches, hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, one hundred fifty to two hundred, sure. and then like Glorious gets a little more expensive, but I think they're in that like sweet spot of. It's like you can buy a full keyboard that will just work out of the box, but it's got hot swappable switches. It's got like different keycaps that you can buy a bunch of customized stuff that you can upgrade later. So right. it's almost like buying a pre-built PC, a, but knowing you can change the graphics card later. It's a it's a foundation. It's like the it's the the um oh my god, what's it called? What's the word? What's we're the, thinking we're both thinking of the I word. don't think we're thinking it's of the It's a same. platform. It's a platform. <laughs> I was gonna say it's the gateway drug. <laughs> Oh no no no! It's the it's it's the platform that you can you can swap yes, things okay, out on fair. later. Yeah, and it's like yeah. it's like the entry level into that. Like sure. you can start pretty entry level, but you can go pretty deep on a glorious keyboard, which I think is why they're in a really cool marketplace. But that's like that's a little more expensive than that. And I'm assuming there's not much you can change because all of it needs to be those clear it's pieces. Proprietary. Yeah, very. And I just as good as people are at typing, I don't think I would ever want a keyboard with none of the letters or anything on the keycaps yeah I'm, I'm a pretty good typist but i i do check my hands once in a while all the time like there are so many times where i have to check my hands for certain things there are keys a, you just don't hit all the time i and... had a matte black keyboard for a while mm -hmm. no i remember letters. that yeah it got pretty tough i don't think we ever used it to actually type on we used it for like a prop yeah so yeah i don't know i don't love this thing mm. i think it's kind of weird and it's pretty wild i think final mouse kind of sucks but well <laughs> we'll check out uh well, I'll, I'll keep my eye out for keyboards. I'm sure you guys will be tweeting them at me as, Please, I, yeah. as I say this. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. We appreciate you for sticking around during the holidays. Happy holidays. And you know what? On, on that note, mm -hmm. if you are uh, hanging out with the family during the holidays, this has never been a better opportunity to steal all of their phones, open the YouTube app, and subscribe to Waveform on their phones. Exactly. When else are you going to get grandma to subscribe to Waveform? I promise you it's worth it. You just tell them you're upgrading their RAM or something She's like going to start getting notifications. It's going to be a good time. So, yeah. We'll just wait here while you do yeah. that. See y'all in 2023. It might even be 2023 for someone watching this. Isn't Probably that weird? Is. Yeah. What up? How does it feel in the future? Are we still around? <laughs> Can you still subscribe in the future?